Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. So in this particular section, I will be doing the quick revision of this very important topic that is atrial fibrillation. So among the various types of arrhythmias that is atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, VT, VF. Among all these, the most common sustained arrhythmia is the atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation, it is the most common sustained arrhythmia. And what exactly happens is the atrial rate abnormally increases where the atrial rate will be around 300 to 400 per minute. There will be loss of the atrial contraction and that will lead to irregular ventricular rhythm. That is a problem in patients with the atrial fibrillation. So this is the most common sustained arrhythmia with disorganized rapid atrial activity. Right, disorganized, rapid atrial activity, right. So that is a problem in the atrial fibrillation. And if you take the ventricular response, so this ventricular response, if you observe, there can be atrial fibrillation with fast ventricular response, where the ventricular rate will be more than 100 per minute. Or when the individual is on treatment, there will be atrial fibrillation with controlled ventricular response where the rate is less than 100 per minute. Okay. So typically the rate, it will be like fast ventricular rhythm. And how much will be that ventricular rate? It is around, it is like more than 100. So it will be in a range of 110 to 160 beats per minute right 110 to 160 beats per minute and in a scenario where there is AV block like for example you have given digoxin in a patient with atrial fibrillation so in this scenario the ventricular rate can be less than 60 beats per minute it can be less than 60 beats per minute so that is what can happen if the individual is taking any AV blocking drug so Rate variability is there due to AV node filtering disorganized atrial signals. So that is and what will be the clinical presentation in these patients because of increased ventricular rate, the clinical presentation will be in the form of the palpitations. And because the atrial rate is increased to 300 to 400 beats per minute, you have just flickering of the atrial contraction that can cause the stasis of the blood and that will result in the clot formation within the left atrial appendage. And this clot can get showered in the form of emboli into the systemic circulation. So that is a problem with the AF. And what does the ECG show? The ECG will show you first and foremost rhythm if you observe, you will have irregularly irregular rhythm. Right, you will have irregularly irregular rhythm and there is no distinct P waves. Right, there is no distinct P waves and the QRS complex will be normal but you will have variable RR interval. Right, you will have variable RR interval. So these will be the ECG changes. So you have ectopic atrial activity that leads to chaotic baseline with variable RR interval that will be the ECG findings in patients with the AF. And what is the epidemiology of these patients with the AF? More than 95% of the cases, they are observed in individuals more than 60 years of age, right? And whereas if you take the lifetime risk, Okay, so if you take the lifetime risk, lifetime risk, it is nearly around 25% for men who are of age 40 years, right? Lifetime risk is nearly around 25% for men who are of age 40 years. And if you take the male to female uh, preponderance, there is slight male preponderance and as well as the white predominance then compared to that of the black population. And there are multiple etiologies that will be causing AF. 
and among these multiple etiologies hypertension is one of the most common cause and apart from that there are multiple causes the pneumonic can be made out in the form of the atrial fib what is this atrial fib the word a it stands for alcohol consumption binge consumption of alcohol can cause the holiday heart syndrome where the individual can have sudden cardiac death and that is mainly because of the af and t stands for thyroid disease that is the hyperthyroidism can cause the atrial fibrillation the word r stands for the rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease where the individual develops the mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation causing left atrial enlargement causing the atrial fibrillation okay and the word i it stands for the ischemic heart diseases the word a stands for the atrial septal defect the word l it stands for the lung pathology and what is the lung pathology the lung pathology can be in the form of pulmonary embolism or the obstructive sleep apnea right and uh, fib or the word f the pronunciation is with f that is pheochromocytoma so even in patients with pheochromocytoma you will have the atrial fibrillation and the b stands for blood pressure so the most common cause will be the hypertension so this is like one of the mnemonic which helps us to memorize what are the various etiologies that will be causing the af and if you see the classification of the af like you have the first episode right where the individual is having the atrial fibrillation for the first time then followed by that like we have the recurrent af where multiple episodes of af are being present then we have paroxysmal af where the duration of the af is less than 7 days and it is self terminating without any intervention then persistent means where the af is being present for more than 7 days and here the individual requires an intervention for the treatment or the individual requires an intervention for the reversal then followed by that long standing af so what do you understand by this long standing af so long standing af in the sense where the af is present for more than 1 year and then followed by that we have the permanent af right then followed by that we have the permanent af now what is the reason or what is the importance in classification of this afs it is important for therapy selection and as well as the prognosis right and if you take the pathophysiology the pathophysiology of the af it is multifactorial right the pathophysiology of the af is multifactorial multifactorial in the sense where you have ectopic foci which is originating mainly from the pulmonary veins that is one reason the other reason is the remodeling where there will be left atrial hypertrophy causing the cardiac remodeling or the fibrosis of the left atria or the fibrosis of the atria so these are like the these fibrosed atria will be arrhythmogenic resulting in atrial fibrillation so now these patients mainly with the fibrosis this leads to shortened refractory periods and there will be reentry circuit and structural changes and this reentry circuit these are the important mechanisms for the development of the af and this reentry circuit will be within the atria surrounding this fibrosed atria this is about the pathophysiology and what are the triggers the triggering sites for the af there are most ectopic premature atrial contractures which arise in the pulmonary vein musculature so the triggering site will be the pulmonary vein superior vena cava then followed by that the coronary sinus and then vein of marshall right vein of marshall so these are the trigger sites for the atrial fibrillation and how does the disease progress so the disease from the state of paroxysmal af it progresses to persistent af and from persistent af it progresses to the permanent af okay so from paroxysmal to persistent to permanent af
right? So if you see the disease progression, you have electrical and structural remodeling which worsens with time. And symptoms, as already I have said you, the important symptomatologies include like palpitations, that is because of increased ventricular rate and cardiac output is reduced. So that is the reason why they'll have fatigue and the individual can go into a state of pulmonary edema because of increased left atrial pressures that will cause dyspnea. And as the cardiac output is increased in patients with AF with fast ventricular response, then in such case, the cardiac output is so reduced that cerebral perfusion reduces and resulting in syncopal attack. And next is the exercise intolerance. Right, exercise intolerance. Okay, so these are the symptoms in case of the AF. And due to irregular rhythm rate and there is also loss of atrial kick. Due to loss of atrial kick only, the individual will have increased left atrial pressure and that will cause pulmonary edema resulting in dyspnea. And what are the complications which are associated with the development of these AFS? So in patients with AF, the atrial rate is increased to almost 200 to 300 or 300 to 400 per minute. There is stasis of the blood and that will result in thrombus formation within the left atrial appendage. And this thrombus which is there in the left atrial appendage can shower an emboli. That will result in the development of stroke. And stroke is observed in 25% of all the cases of the atrial fibrillation and followed by that, the individual can also have dementia, heart failure because of increased ventricular response and then tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. Right, tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy okay so these are the complications which are observed in patients with the atrial fibrillation and uh, these patients even long term myopathy is also possible but the very important concerning complication is stroke because of the embolism and we have one uh, component that is called as the stiff left atrial syndrome and the stiff left atrial syndrome is that this occur as a consequence of the fibrosis and left atrial non-compliance because in these patients there is like remodeling causing fibrosis of the left atrium and that is what results in the stiff left atrial syndrome. So there will be le elevated left atrial pressure, there will be volume overload and there will be congestive heart failure like symptoms. So if you see the detailed discussion of this left atrial syndrome, so this is a clinical syndrome due to loss of left atrial complaints and there is elevated left atrial pressure and right there will be elevated left atrial pressure despite preserved LV function. The LV function will be normal but left atrial pressure is elevated and why is that? That is because of the fibrosis and one of the very important cause for the stiff left atrial syndrome is post atrial fibrillation ablation where you have given the radio frequency or where you have done surgery. So post atrial fibrillation ablation is one of the important cause for the stiff left atrial syndrome. The other causes include surgical LA scarring, radiation induced fibrosis and idiopathic atrial fibrosis. And because the LA pressure grossly increases, the individual will develop pulmonary edema because of which there will be dyspnea, pulmonary hypertension. There will be enlarged V waves in the LA as well as the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure tracing and there is absence of significant LV diastolic dysfunction. So LV function is like normal or preserved, but it is LA which goes very bad. And how will you diagnose this? When you do a right heart catheterization, this will show you that the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is being elevated, but there will be normal left ventricular and diastolic pressure. And at the same time, you also need to exclude the mitral regurgitation because mitral regurgitation or mitral stenosis is one of the cause for the elevated left atrial pressure. And echo will show you that there is normal left ventricle, but there is small stiff left atria. And what is the treatment? See, the important problem which is happening is mainly because of the pulmonary edema. So you need to give the diuretics. And at the same time, the pulmonary vasodilators in selected cases and rarely left atrial reduction surgery or transplant should be done in refractory cases. So this is about the stiff left atrial syndrome. And the diagnosis of the atrial fibrillation, it is mainly done by what? It is mainly done by a 12 lead ECG or in cases of like uh, paroxysmal AF where that AF terminates within seven days. In such cases like what you need to do is ambulatory monitoring is required.
right? In such cases, what you need to do is ambulatory monitoring is required, showing irregularly irregular rhythm without P waves, right? So there will be no P waves and there will be variable RR interval, right? And this is confirmed by ECG or like variable technology increasing where there is increased use for screening. So that is what is nothing but your ambulatory monitoring, right? And if you do a risk stratification in patients with the atrial fibrillation, because there is risk of the cardio embolism, 1.5 to 1.9 X times there is mortality risk, right? 1.5 to 1.9 X times there is mortality risk, right? And 25% chances of stroke risk is present in patients with the atrial fibrillation and there is also increased risk of dementia. Okay, so this is about the risk stratification. So this is in brief about the etiology, clinical features, the types of the atrial fibrillation and how will you diagnose atrial fibrillation. In the next immediate section, I will be discussing the treatment and when to give anticoagulation and what is the risk of bleeding with anticoagulation, all that I'll be discussing in the next section. Thank you very much.